I don't try to come back at anything completely blank. I always do something that helps me remember where I was or where I need to be. Welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. On the show, it's my job to tease out the creative solutions my guests are coming up with to change the world through creativity, social action, and mindset. I also give you tips and techniques so you can do the same. This episode is brought to you by my class, Meditation for Busy People, where you'll learn how to relieve stress and discover clarity and joy in just five minutes a day. It's also brought to you by the Brain FM app and this podcast host, Podbean. Also, follow the podcast on Instagram or TikTok and check out our shop for merch, music, and musings. The links are all in the show notes. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. This is a bonus episode. I wasn't actually going to do a Christmas Day episode. I was thinking, oh, we're all going to be celebrating. This is one of those days where who's going to actually be taking the time to listen to podcasts? And it turns out I am. (laughs) I am one of those people. I woke up this morning and after I was done working out, I listened to one of my favorite shows. So I went, you know what? Maybe other people will too. And today I want to talk about something that's super important to me, or at least I'm finding that it's super important to me. And here it is. It's the importance of anchors. What do I mean by that? Okay, so if you're a longtime listener of the show, you know that I do a new creative thing every year. I choose something at which I can be a rank beginner, and then I spend a year doing it. Uh, A few years ago, I wrote a short story every single day for a year. Last year, I did uh, a piece of art every single day for a year. This year, I've started the piano. I know. Among all my other instruments, uh, I play guitar and flute, and I'm a singer, and I'm a violinist, and hand drums, and this and that and the other. One of the things I've always wanted to be able to play is the piano. And uh, I stink at it. Let's let's call it what it is. I'm not very good. But I went, you know what? I'm going to see about making this happen. And I really believe that one of the ways to keep yourself going and growing is to try new things. Everything from learning a new instrument to taking a different train or a different car or a different whatever way home uh, every, every day if you want to. Try new things. See the new sites. Get more and more information into your brain and into your body. And that will help you uh, live a more innovative, creative, and quite frankly, scintillating life. So uh, this year, when it came time to choose, what am I going to do? I went, you know what, I'm going to bite the bullet. And I'm going to learn how to play the piano. And I'm using an app. And I'm going to have to Remember the name Simple or Simply is in the name, and I keep forgetting what the name is. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I just am enjoying learning. And I have questions about how they're doing some of the things because I know music theory, how they're deciding to teach chords, for example. Uh, So if you're looking at the G chord, the root of the chord, the the bottom note, really, the first uh, note in the chord should be the actual note in the chord, for example. So if you're playing a G chord, the bottom note of what you're playing should be a G, and that's not how they're teaching it. Now, I don't know enough to know whether or not this is the case uh, when a piano teacher teaches you. I'm going through this for a year, and I'm going to see what I know at the end. And they're pretty good about teaching and reminding you about proper sitting and playing technique, making sure your hands and fingers are rounded. And they talk about... uh, the, the necessity to warm up and to stretch and all of that stuff, which I talk to about my music students when I teach singing or violin or guitar, I spend a lot of time with my students talking about the importance of warming up before you practice and cooling down. So I do a lot of that already. So it's very good to have that as part of the sort of habit building, habit forming facet of learning this new instrument. And I have an old Yamaha keyboard. The keys are yellowed with age, and that's what I'm using, and I'm enjoying the heck out of it. I really am. But what's interesting to me is this is going, I'm giving it a year. I'm going to see the end of, I've been doing this a little over a month, so really the end of, I want to say October, is when uh, 
November 1st is roughly when I started. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of decide for myself, what, what, what have I learned? What do I know at the end of this year and decide whether or not I want to keep going. And I, one of the reasons for that is because I want to be better acquainted with writing for chords like this, uh, writing melody, melody lines and harmony lines as part of the project that I'm doing, which is writing a musical and a couple of different musicals, actually. So I'm preparing. This is all in preparation for writing these musicals, for writing the lyrics, for writing the music, writing the chord structure, the eventual accompaniment, and I'm hoping to find somebody who will do the orchestrations. But the point is, in order to be able to do this big project that I want to do, I'm laying the groundwork. I am finding the skills that I need, and then I'm building those skills. And with luck, within a year, I will have some idea about whether or not I have any skill or sufficient skill, at least, to begin to write these songs that I want to write for the musical that I'm writing. The musicals, I should say, there are two of them. So there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot to be said for uh, laying the groundwork. But as I'm learning, as I'm learning this, I'm kind of going, okay, where, where do I go? How do I make this happen? And it's a really good question, right? Because I'm giving myself 25 minutes a day and this is religious, right? I am 25 minutes every single day, even if I'm exhausted, even if I've been out all day, uh, I'm trying to do it in the morning when I first wake up, you know, I meditate, I get up, I meditate, I do my yoga and then I practice the piano. And if that's not going to work, I have to do something else. And what is the something else? The something else is when I come home late at night, I still have to sit down put my headphones on, plug everything in and work 25 minutes. So I'm building that habit of you practice. That's just, it's you get up, you put on, you know, take off your jammies, put on your workout clothes, brush your teeth, you play the piano. And uh, today's lesson, and this is what prompted this sort of surprise episode, was uh, working on left-hand chords. Now, uh, I, there's a video, and actually, before I go any further, I'm going to invite you to look at the link that I put in the show notes of the video of me playing these three left-hand chords. And it's important because the chords themselves that I'm playing are the C chord, which has the notes C, E, and G, the G chord, which has the notes B, D, and G, and the F chord that has the notes C, F, and A. And if you notice, the, the notes that I just mentioned, some of the letters are, uh, they, the notes are in common. The chords have those, those notes in common. Why is that important? Well, when you're playing, and if you look at the video, I'm going to ask you to stop right now <laughs> at the seven minute, roughly seven minute uh, moment. Stop, go watch the video, click the link in the show notes, watch it on YouTube, and take a look at my, my hands and what they're doing. In case you're not ready to go and listen, here are the notes that I played. If you'll notice, what I'm doing there uh, is I'm playing the C chord and then I go to the F and my 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 pinky finger stays on the on that low C the first the same the same note but I move my index finger and my thumb up a note for each of those and then I come back down to C and so my my pinky finger stayed as a little anchor so I didn't move my hand all the way anywhere I sort of kept my pinky finger as an anchor moved over two notes to play that F chord and then I came back to C and my pinky finger stayed as an anchor. And now to move to the G chord, I kept my thumb as an anchor and I took my third finger and my pinky finger, my middle finger, my pinky finger, and I moved them down to play the G chord. And I did that a few times in the video. Why is that important? It's important because if you take your hand away and you, you're you somewhere else in space, when you bring it back to the piano, you're going to have to look to see where the heck things are because you don't have an anchor right? You get a little lost. It's very easy to get lost. There are 88 keys on the piano, and it's very easy to get lost where you where you had been is not necessarily where you're putting your hand back down. So you want to do it by, by feel, by touch, rather than by, 
by sight, especially if and when you start playing music and you're reading music as you're playing, you can't afford to be looking down at your hands and going, oh, where the heck is this? Where's the note that I needed to play? No, you need to be able to kind of know where it is in space, but you don't know where it is in space. Just, ah, you know, the spirits have spoken and now I know where that note is in space. That's not what it is. Instead, you let your fingers where they are provide the anchor. Now, there are going to be times when you move really far away uh, from one part, one chord to another part of the keyboard to play something completely different. And I get that. But hopefully by then, when I'm much more familiar with where my body is in space in relation to the piano, I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to go, I can make this jump. I know where I was and I know where I'm going. And then if I need to come back, I know how to come back to where I was. But in the meantime, as I'm learning, I'm using my pinky finger and my thumb as anchors. And so that's why I wanted you to watch that video, because using those fingers as anchors lets me go from one chord to the other pretty quickly as I'm learning this, right? I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, today was the very first time that I had played those chords together. And if you're someone who already plays the piano, you may be shaking your head and going, oh, she's such a newbie. And I am. But if you've never played the piano, it might look impressive. And it's not as impressive as it would be if I weren't looking and could just guess. But I am using my fingers as those anchors. I'm letting them anchor me in space so that when I go moving uh, one set of fingers while I keep one finger, while I keep my pinky finger on the C and I move my index finger and my thumb over so that I can play the F and the A, and that's what forms that that F chord, inverted F chord, but okay. <laughs> Again, I know music theory, so I'm kind of going, well, ah, it's a little weird, but okay. So I moved, I kept the pinky finger exactly where it was. I didn't move, I didn't lift my hand up off the keyboard. I kept my pinky finger where on that key, moved the other two fingers, and then came back to that C chord, and then kept my thumb on the G of the C chord and moved my other two fingers down to the B and the D. So I can do that switcheroony all the live long day because I know where I am in space. And then on top of it, I didn't do this part, but you can also add the right hand melody. So I can be playing these chords with a lot of certainty about where I am in space and what I have to do next. And that's how I build the the skill, the ability, if you will, of doing something totally different with my right hand. And you have to understand why that's important to me specifically is because I have never been able to do two different things with my hands on the piano really in my life. In order to do it, it's been it's been so much work to get even the simplest thing to happen. Whereas when I focus on these anchors, it becomes much easier to do something completely different with my right hand because my left hand kind of knows where it needs to be in space. And as someone who plays the violin, where my bowing hand doing is doing something completely different than what my fingers are doing, I still kind of go, oh, okay. I, and, and you have to understand, I started playing the violin when I was five, so I built that habit pretty early. The same can kind of be said for guitar. When I'm playing fingerstyle or if I'm strumming, I don't pick. But if I'm strumming or playing fingerstyle on the guitar, my hands are doing something different. And from each other, I mean, and the left hand is cording. It's actually pressing the frets and the right hand is strumming or or picking with my fingers. And for some reason that that is still easier to me. And I don't know why I have to look (laughs) at what my brain is doing. Uh, Maybe I can find a neuroscientist to to plug me into something and put some some uh, probes on my head and see what's happening in my brain when I'm playing guitar and violin versus the piano because the piano has always confounded me. So when I'm in that space and I'm going, okay, now I'm going to switch my hands so that they are both facing the same thing but doing something totally different from one another, having that anchor really, really helps. I've realized just how important that is in just about everything else I do. I don't try to come back at anything completely blank. I always do something that helps me remember where I was or where I need to be. So the pianos, learning the piano is one of those moments where I get to do that. But 
hang on a second, and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna play you a little flute because that's what I do. Um, here's a little flute bit. It's another one of those ha ah, moments. And when I come back after just a sec, I'm gonna talk to you about how you can do this exact same thing in writing and for any pretty much any other creative pursuit. Okay, so here's how we do it for writing. A lot of people, they write their words or they write their 30 minutes or whatever it is. And when it's done, they're done. Great. And then you come back tomorrow and you go, okay, where was I? What was I about to do? Instead of going, I'm done with this and walking away, I leave myself an anchor. I never leave a scene in the middle if I can avoid it. But also, I never leave my writing desk or my computer Without going, the next scene is, and I write down what the next scene is going to be. And I might even write down the first line of that next scene. And the same goes for a play. If I'm writing a play, I don't stop the scene and just go, I'll come back to it later. I always leave myself a breadcrumb. I leave myself some sort of an anchor so that I know where I was going. Because I'm an idea person and I have ideas all the time. And I am a lot of the time, there's so much going on that if I don't give myself that anchor, I might forget where I was going to go. Now, some people might go, oh, but then you're letting inspiration strike you. And that's really cool, too. And if that works for you, that's great. I'm telling I'm telling you this. If you're the kind of person like I am, where you kind of have a lot of ideas, but you have the idea of where you want the piece to go. This is the same thing. If you're sculpting something, the same thing. Remind yourself, put a sticky note on what you're sculpting to tell yourself where you were going to go next. It's so important for all of us because we're hyper stimulated. You know that I talk about this all the time on this show. We live in a hyper stimulated society and we often end up in this situation where we're going, holy crap, where was I? What was I doing? I don't know. And an anchor helps you remember where you were going. So crucial. <laughs> In my mind, it's really, it's really important. So you can do it with writing, you can do it with drawing, you can do it with music, you can do it with pretty much anything. Remind yourself where you're going next, whether it's the minutia of I'm playing a G chord and I have to get to a C chord or an F chord or a D chord or whatever, and I'm leaving myself my fingers as the anchors, or whether I leave myself, uh, this scene is over, but the next scene starts up at a cafe, for example. Whatever it is, I might give myself the first line. He stomped up the stairs and screamed. Great. Now I know kind of where I'm going with that next scene. Instead of going, uh, I was going to go somewhere, where was I? Leave yourself the breadcrumb. Keep the anchor in there. And it's going to be amazing how much it improves the flow of what you're doing. And the piano is really helping me realize this, especially since I am, again, rank beginner on it. I really don't know much about it. Even if the music theory sometimes makes me cross my eyes or the music theory in the app. And partially I did the app because I, uh, I don't have the, the resources right now to take lessons because if I did, I would, I would go take lessons with a, with a private teacher. Instead, I'm using the app and I, and I like it. I really like how it's teaching me. I really like the practice and I really like having the habit developing that this is something, this is just something I do. It means 25 minutes not spent doing other things, but 25 minutes a day. It's one of my anchors now. I know that every single day, no matter what, just like I brush my teeth and just like I do my yoga, I'm practicing the piano. So I'm very excited about that. And the other part of it is, is that it gives me energy that is creative in its nature to focus on other things. And if you are in New York City and you're listening to this, I'm going to invite you to a little event that I am hosting at Pier 57 in the Daffodil Room at 1 p.m. on January 6th. Uh, We are going to have uh, a a reading of my play called Listen, and it's going to be a table read, and it's open to the public. It's not for little kids, though. It's more PG than that, Uh, but if you want to, if you find yourself in New York City and you want to come, it's at 1 p.m. January 6th, and uh, we're going to have a, a table read of the script and I'm incredibly excited they're going and we're going to have a raffle we're going to have some prizes it's going to be super cool 
I'm I'm ridiculously excited for it. I'm ridiculously happy that we're going to do this because, uh, you know, when you're doing this is a sort of another anchor for me because I want to know if the play has legs. Does it make sense to anyone outside of my own head? And that's another anchor. If somebody else hears it and, and or sees it, this is going to be more hear than see, but if somebody else hears it and and it means something to them and they can relate to it, that provides another anchor point because it means that I'm somehow on the right track. Now, this play will need to be developed still, and I'm applying for grants. If you know of any grants for people who are writing plays, drop me a line and let me know. I would, Or if you want to fund it, that would be amazing. I would love to have that as a uh, as something that is an arrow in my quiver, if you will, because I want to have the ability to put this play on. And my new not so secret uh, endeavor for this year and the coming years is going to be to start a theater company. And it's going to be probably original works, but we'll see. I might go back to Shakespeare. Who knows? I don't know. I might go back to Shakespeare's contemporaries. I might do only women playwrights. I'm not sure yet. I just know that the theater company is coming and doing this, putting this event on and seeing how it works and what we can do is incredibly important to me. I want to do this. I want to have theater in a certain way uh, that I can contribute to happening in in New York City. And this is not to say I don't adore and love the theater. Uh, and in fact, if you're listening to this and you are in New York City and you have not seen uh, Confessions of a of a Museum Novice, uh, Gavin Creel's show. I just saw it. Oh, it's amazing. It's at the MCC. I saw it, and it is brilliant. I also recently saw Gutenberg with Andrew Reynolds and Josh Gad, and that is brilliant. Uh, I know some like it hot is closing soon. Go see that. If you're around and you have time and you have uh, the funding to go or to sign up for the lotteries on something like today's today's ticks, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's so worthwhile to go get a chance to see these geniuses make incredible theater. Gavin Creel is an amazing songwriter. I can't get some of those songs out of my head and am just loving it. I hope that they take the darn show to Broadway. I hope it runs for a long time. I hope they do uh, a cast recording of it because it's the, the songs are brilliant. I really, I mean, I just do. <laughs> and the same with Merrily We Roll Along. I'm so grateful that that show came out with its cast recording because I've been listening to it nonstop. I, the other thing that I'm, the other songs, two songs that I'm obsessed with right now from Broadway are You'll Be Back from Hamilton, the song that George the Sixth sings, and that's Jonathan Groff as George the Sixth. And um, I right now can't remember the names of the two women singing, uh, but it's uh, Apex Predator from the Me Girls cast recording, and the, the movie Mean Girls is about to come out, which is a musical based on the show, which was based on the movie written by Tina Fey back in like 2002, 2003, I want to say. And Apex Predator and You'll Be Back for some reason are two songs that have conflated myself, myself, conflated themselves in my mind, and I am listening to them basically on repeat nonstop. And, uh, and part of it is because I want to write songs the way those songs are written. So as I'm beginning to practice the piano more and more with an eye towards writing musicals, uh, I want to surround myself with the kind of music I want to write for the musicals that I'm going to be writing. That's kind of where <laughs> it's it's all part and parcel. I'm gathering. I, I say this to my coaching clients Sometimes you're not ready to act yet. You're still what I call gathering the sand to build the sandcastles, right? You can't build a sandcastle without first gathering some sand. And the sand is all the prep. It's all the preparation that you have to do to make the stuff happen that you want to have happen. You don't just start building. You have to gather. And you start building from one spot, and that's your anchor. And from there, everything gets built out, whether it's out in all sides or out and to the sides or to the perpendicular, whatever it is, you're going to start from the building block, start from the, the keystone, if you will, start from that first step. Everything is built on that first step and that's how you do it. So if you're still gathering your sand and you want some coaching around how to do those next steps so that you can create the life and the work that you want, Drop me a line. Maybe we can do some coaching with you so that you can start living the way you want to live fully, creatively, productively, and freely. All righty.
I'm very excited about this episode. I didn't realize it was going to be like this. Super, super psyched. Uh, or as Gary Vaynerchuk says, I'm pumped. I'm actually more psyched than pumped. I'm older than he is, and psyched is what we used when we were kids. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the episode. Drop me a line. Let me know if you did. If you have questions, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast. Wishing you a very happy holiday season. I don't know if I'm going to come back on New Year's Eve day and give you another episode. So if if not, happy New Year. If so, then you'll hear me say happy New Year again. Until next time, I always remind you to leave it better than you found it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in. Thank you.